Hello, welcome to Yesterday's Airlines. In this video, we're going to be discussing Big Bird, your craftsman, and the latest three releases from this brand. It's not surprising, really, that with the announcement that NG are going to be making Boeing 747s this year, that suddenly we're going to start seeing more 747s appearing in 400 scale. However, these Big Bird announcements, I do not think, are directly related to that. Um, I do think there will be other model makers producing 747s in surprising quantities in the near term. Obviously, Phoenix have announced some recently, and I do know that some other brand will be announcing some too. But these ones actually fit the pattern of behavior from Big Bird and are not as much of a surprise as at first they may appear. Now, if you've not been paying attention in 400 scale, you may think that Big Bird, your craftsman, has just reappeared and this is surprising, but that's not actually quite true. Um, this version of Big Bird, which I call Big Bird Mark III, actually has been around for some time. They released their first models, or announced their first models anyway, back in 2015. And my understanding is that this company has gained access to copies, at least, of the old Big Bird molds, both for the 100, 200, 300 and 400. Um, and these are at the JC Wings factory. So these models are made by JC Wings, as is clear by the latest boxes, but they are branded as 400 Your Craftsman, i.e. Big Bird. But I think it's a little conflicting that the ownership of the molds is with a third party, not necessarily JC themselves, or at least JC do not have full ownership of the molds, even if they can access them. So in some ways, you should see nowadays this Big Bird Mark III as a sub-brand of JC Wings. Kind of like, to be honest, you should see Gemini Jets as a sub-brand of JC Wings, since they don't manufacture their own models and JC makes them for them. So in that way, it is similar. However, you could easily have not noticed that this Big Bird Mark III exists because their output has been really mediocre um, in the, what is it? eight years that they've been about. In fact, they've only produced a handful of models. There were a pair of Singapore Airlines 747-400s and Tropical Scheme, that were the first two announcements. And then there were a pair of Cathay Pacific 747-300s in um, the Lettuce Sandwich Scheme. And then there was um, a pair of Singapore Airlines 747-300s in 2016 and a single Malaysian Airlines 747-400 in the retro colours um, in the same year. So within the first couple of years, they produced about seven models. Then they kind of vanished and didn't reappear until 2017. Well, actually, they did announce some models in 2017, but for some reason it took them a long time to get out, and they didn't actually appear until 2018. And those models consisted of an all-nippon 747-400D, uh, a Cathay Pacific Series 200 in the Spirit of Hong Kong colours, and a Canadian Airlines Series 400. So up to the end of 2018, they had released um, 10 models, which is not exactly um, an enormous output by any means across three to four years. So that was kind of where they had got to by that point in time. They did announce one further model, um, or a couple of further models, should I say, um, an Alitalia Bachi Series 200 and a KLM um, Delivery Colors Series 200. But those models crept out quite late, um, and, and then Big Bird seemed to kind of disappear, um, which was a little disappointing because, as most people probably are aware, um, original Big Bird 747s are worth quite a lot of money in 400 scale and typically are sold for substantial sums on eBay and the seconds market and are really hard to come by. Um, I've really struggled to get them because I'm just not willing to pay outrageous pricing. Um, sometimes you can find them for cheaper, but generally they're hard to find. And that is fueled really this back market economy, I guess, for these Big Bird 747s and been one of the main reasons why um, a lot of collectors really, really want more 747 releases because the originals are so hard to find. The mould 
really nice. Um, obviously, it's a product of its time. So it has the wing seam and it does have slightly chunky engine pylons, but broadly, the rest of the model is really good. Far better than a lot of the contemporary 747s um, from that sort of time. Although, obviously, there are other good 747 options out there. The Dragonwing 747, much maligned, is actually really good when they get the printing right. And the Witty Wings Aviation 400 ones, which are copies of the old Big Birds anyway, are excellent too. But broadly, the Big Bird 747 has been seen as something of a holy grail in the scale for many years. So it's always been good to see at least copies of the mold come back um, and get some usage. Now, the reason I say copies of the mold is because there is a distinct difference between these Big Bird set Mark III 747s um, and the original, and that is in the wingtip aerials, which are substantially thicker on these ones. That's not necessarily a bad thing because the old wingtip aerials tended to snap off quite easily, but at the same time, it is a difference. And that's why I tend to see these as not the original molds, but copies of them. I should also shout out that JC Wings did sell a substantial chunk of 747s, blank ones, on these molds to Aero Classics, who did produce a line of their own 747s a couple of years ago. Um, they produced some really nice examples. Um, there was Air France, um, there was Swiss Air, there was TAP Air Portugal, um, there was an Iranian model as well. Um, and there were some really nice simple sevens they did make, but they only had, I think, two or 3,000 blanks. Uh, so there weren't hundreds of releases. And obviously, Aero Classics being Aero Classics also did not include the aerials, which Big Bird Mark III had just started adding to their later releases. So there has been some usage of this mold over the past few years but it has not all been from Big Bird Mark III. I do believe also that uh, JC Wings snuck out a release using this mold too, and I believe that was a, a Singapore Airlines example. So it's not just been Big Bird by any means that has been using this, and it did seem until last year that Big Bird Mark III had kind of gone back to wherever it came from really and disappeared, but it does seem that whoever the owners are, um, were really just kind of in hibernation and actually, they actually are still about. Because last year, very surprisingly, you had the announcement kind of out of the blue of a, another trio of Big Bird releases. Um, and these were the Evergreen Super Tanker Series 100 and also a pair of Air India Series 300s. Now I've reviewed the Air India Series 300 at yesterdaysairlines.com, so check out that model review. I've also um, recorded a snapshot video of the model as well. It was a delightful model. It is a delightful model. Um, and I have to say that, you know, it's hard to dislike any of the releases using these molds. They are very nice. Obviously, as I said, a little outdated, but broadly, you're going to have to say these are good 747s. So it'll be interesting to see how the new NG mold competes against these. Obviously, you'd expect it to be better because it's going to have um, improvements that can only come really by having a new mold from 2023 and not an old mold dating from pre-2010. But these are still very nice and very um, alluring 747s that I'm very interested in. So it is good to see um, these turning up. Now, the only drawback really from these is that the recent releases, last year's ones, and these three that have just been announced are coming with an extra sticker. Now, why is that a bad thing? It's not really, except that it tends to drive the price up quite a lot. And it makes these models very expensive, well over 50 quid if you're in the UK. Um, and what really value is the sticker adding? Um, it's the sort of thing where if you use it, then you damage the value of the model moving forward. Um, and so, yeah... I didn't use the sticker in my Air India, it's still in the box and I don't plan on using it. All it did was increase the price. It's a little bit like the models that JC's been adding aviation tags to recently. It's a nice idea, but all it really does is drive up the price. I don't really want the tag, I just want the model. So yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced 
for the need for these extras if they're going to increase the price of the model substantially. Anyway, that's a bit of a background really on Big Bird Mark III as I say, if you're interested in the original Big Bird and the history of that brand, it's not really related to this one at all that is using the logo, um, then that history is available at yesterdaysairlines.com. It is quite interesting. The original Big Bird produced a wide range of 747s and 767s and some other models in the early 2000s at the Aero Classics factory. And you can read the history of the brand at the site. Um, it's tied up with Aero Classics, it's tied up with the fate of that factory, which was the Witty factory. And so that is quite interesting. And there is also another brand called Big Bird Mark II, um, which has elements of the original Big Bird as well. And again, there's more information about that at yesterdaysairlines.com. So if you're interested in the history of the original Big Birds, check those stories out. But this is Big Bird Mark III, and I've pretty much covered everything they've done, which is really a very small number of about 15 models up to this announcement. And this announcement covers off three new 747 releases, all of which from the picture look like they're going to be super nice. Um, the first up is an all Nippon 747-100SR. So that's the short range version of the 747 that all Nippon used for domestic routes in the 1970s and 80s. Looks really nice. I don't have an all Nippon 747 in this scheme, so I am very tempted by this model um, and it is a nice scheme to be honest. Has many of these been made previously? I would say you know they're hard to find you don't see them on the second market. I know there have been versions because all nipping is obviously an airline which attracts a lot of interest. If I'm looking back through what has been made there have actually been 14 747-100s um, but quite a few of these are by unusual brands or brands with a slightly inferior um, moulds. So there's, for example, Magic Models. I imagine that there's a good chance most of those Magic 747s are no longer with us, either zinc rotted off the face of the planet or have got major bubbling going on. There's Big Bird Mark II with a Snoopy scheme. Yeah, again, that mould, the Big Bird Mark II mould, really not doing much for me. There's the original Big Birds, obviously, which are very nice, but there's only one in this scheme, um, and that dates from a long time ago in a land far, far away. So not exactly the sort of model you're going to find very often and it's easy to get hold of. Um, and that dates in 2008, actually. It's quite a late Big Bird, but still really, really rare. And the other models are made up mainly of Hogan, um, who've got... They've actually done a full flaps down configuration with a display base. It's very expensive and sought after model, but actually the 747 mold itself is not spectacular in my opinion. It's nice, but it's not that nice. So there's not a lot of competition because the only other model I'm missing out, which is wearing the same scheme, is from Phoenix, which was only made in 2022. And this one is so much better than that. Um, that embarrassment of a Phoenix version that, you know, I'm not even going to talk any more about that. So there's not a lot of competition for this all nip and release. I think this is going to be super good and it's definitely one that I'm keen to get. I'm going to put this one up into Supersonic. Next up, we've got Iran Air and this is a bit of a surprise um, in the sense that, as I mentioned earlier on, Iran Air was one of the releases that Aero Classics made when they got hold of the mold so it's a little surprising that they are making another version this one is epiam it's still wearing the 90s scheme of iran air with the white base um, it looks really nice the model i have to say i mean again everything looks good in this scheme but aero classics have already made epiai though i do believe Theirs was a 200, and this is a 747-100B. Um, the difference is pretty minimal. Um, and I do think Aero Classics also made a mess of the wing top colours on their 747 because it was an ex Lufthansa model. Um, but nonetheless, um, I don't think this one's going to be so much better that I feel the need to replace the Aero Classics version um, because the differences are primarily print-related. So for me, this one is, is not that exciting. This is the least interesting of the three releases for me and yeah I'm tempted to put this one 
into Workhorse, I think. Uh, it's almost a high flyer because anything on a classic 747 that's not Phoenix is almost a high flyer. But no, I'll give this one Workhorse. Um, there have previously been um, releases by Witty and AB400 on a very nice 747 molds wearing this exact scheme. So it's not even particularly rare when it comes to 747 classics, um, to be honest. Now the third um, 747 that Big Bird have announced here, the last of the 747s in this set, is one which is perhaps closer to my heart than the other two, um, and that is Air New Zealand. It's ZKNZY. It's wearing the 90s Pacific Wave scheme. And you have to say, that really surprisingly, um, it doesn't look like anyone has ever made this. Um, this is the very first time that anybody has made an Air New Zealand 747 Classic in this scheme. Yes, there have been Series 400s wearing this, I believe, but I don't think there have been any 747-200s. So that's really surprising. Um, and so this model gains value substantially because of that. It's not even one that Phoenix have attempted to create something awful with. It really has ne never been made before. There have been Big Bird 747-200s from New Zealand, but they've all been wearing the 1980s schemes. And Gemini have also made a very nice version too, but again, wearing the 80s scheme. So this one, wearing the Pacific Wave, is quite unique. And clearly that is going to elevate this one in my rankings up to supersonic. It's a model that I don't have any space for in my cabinet, to be honest, but I'm going to have to find some because it looks really nice and I'll almost certainly be getting this. So, really nice set of 747s. Hopefully they'll be at the stores quite soon. You can never tell with JC Wings distribution, unfortunately, but a really nice trio overall. As I said, I don't think this is a reflection of what NG are doing. Um, Big Bird Mark III release two or three models every year, or try to anyway. Um, and since they released three last year, and there's three more here, there'll probably be another three next year. So I'm not expecting a, a huge number of releases from them. It wouldn't surprise me at all, however, to see this model reappearing. In fact, I'm almost certain it's going to very soon. So keep an eye out for other brands that may be releasing 747 classics using this mold. But um, these are good stop gaps, basically, uh, in the sense that it's going to be a long time before NG could even release a wide range of 747s, assuming their mold is very nice. Um, you can't really have enough. Um, these are really nice. They'll fit very nicely in my collection. They've got antennas. They've got a really nice base mold. They're going to be very attractive. So... Thumbs up, really, to Big Bird 400 here. Um, these are probably the most interesting releases to come out of the JC factory in a little while. Um, so it's good, and hopefully we will see more, more regularly. But as I say, given Big Bird's history and release plan, that's possibly not going to be the case very quickly. Cool. Well, that's all I've got to say today. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Keep on checking out yesterdaysairlines.com. Keep on checking me out at Instagram, at Yester Airlines. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.